So you're interested in space law, huh? With everything going on in space these days, it's a great question to be asking. And lucky for us, some brand new research is making some waves. We're diving into a paper about something called polite conometrics. Yeah, this isn't just some pie in the sky academic stuff either. We're talking about a real challenge. How do you make good rules, regulations, for an industry that's supposed to be worth trillions of dollars? Especially since we could be looking at three times as many satellites in orbit just a few years from now. Whoa, okay, hold on, let's back up a bit. We know the space industry is booming right now, private companies launching rockets, tourists going to space, the whole nine yards. But what about the law? Weren't the big treaties written ages ago? Exactly. <laughs> like the Outer Space Treaty, the big one. 1967, way back when, is a huge deal then, don't get me wrong, but things like space mining, these mega constellations of satellites, it's pretty vague on that stuff. So it's like trying to play a brand new video game with an old instruction manual, right? So how do we fix that? New treaties. It's not that easy. Hmm. And that's where polite conometrics comes in. It's a way to look at the real world effects of space policies, not just the laws on paper. So instead of here's the law, follow it, it's more like, does the law actually work? Is it doing what it's supposed to? Exactly. It goes past legal theory and looks at how these space regulations actually play out for the economy, for society, the practical side of things. This paper we're looking at, it talks about the regulatory confluence theory. Basically, it says that it's not just one law, but a bunch of factors all mixed together that really shape the space industry. Okay, I'm listening. Regulatory confluence theory. Tell me more. Think about trying to figure out where a rocket's going to go. You wouldn't just look at the engine, right? You got gravity, wind, air resistance all playing a part. It's kind of like that. Yeah. To really understand how space regulations work, you got to look at investment, technology, international trade, even how many rockets actually make it to space. It's a lot. So it's a much bigger picture than just the law itself. It's about how everything interacts up there. You got it. And get this, they even came up with a mathematical framework to measure all this. They call it the policy junction formula and lets them quantify these forces, maybe even predict how changes in one area will affect everything else. Whoa, hold on, a formula. <laughs> now we're talking. That. that sounds insanely complicated though. How does that even work in the real world? Let's look at an example from the paper. The International Telecommunication Union, the ITU, they're in charge of who gets to use what part of the radio spectrum, which is super important for satellites to talk to Earth. So like air traffic control, but for space. Exactly. And with more and more satellites going up, the ITU's got a tough job. There's only so much radio spectrum to go around, and they have to make sure everyone's playing fair and their systems don't interfere with each other. I can imagine. That's going to be like directing traffic in a city where thousands of new cars appear every day. Perfect analogy. That's why this research is so important right now. The paper suggests that plate conometrics could give the ITU some really useful tools, like being able to model different ways to share the spectrum and potentially spotting problems or interference before it even happens. That's wild. It's like having a crystal ball for space traffic management. Yeah. But instead of magic, it's data and algorithms. Well, maybe not a crystal ball. <laughs> but it definitely gives us a new way to understand and deal with all these challenges the space industry is facing. This is already blowing my mind, and we're just getting started. I know you're probably as eager as I am to go deeper, so let's move on to some real-world examples of how this polite conometrics thing can actually be used. So, we've established that this polite conometrics thing is more than just a buzzword, but it's still a bit fuzzy. How about some real-world applications? The paper mentioned something about New Zealand, right? Yeah, it uses New Zealand's space industry as a good example. Well, New Zealand, why them? Well, they're kind of a perfect case study. A smaller country, but they've got this ambitious, fast-growing space sector. Rocket lab, satellite companies, even a bit of space tourism. They're punching above their weight, that's for sure. But with limited resources, how do they know they're investing in the right places? And that's where this new approach comes in. Polite conometrics lets them look at their policies, not just as ideas, but with real data. How much investment are they getting? Do they have enough skilled workers? Are the regulations actually helping or holding back new space companies? So it's like a reality check for their space program, but using actual numbers instead of just guessing. Exactly. Take the policy junction formula, for example. It lets them play out different what-if scenarios, like what if they change the tax breaks for space startups or put more money into science education. They can see what might happen before making a decision. Wow. That's like having a simulation for their whole space industry. You got it. And it's not just for one country. 
Imagine using this on a global scale. Whoa, okay. That's a whole other level. Any specific areas where that kind of international cooperation is really important? Space debris is the big one, right? It affects everyone. But to actually solve it, everyone needs to agree on the problem, and that takes data not just blaming each other. Makes sense. You have to trust the information to trust the solution. And that's the cool thing about plate kinometrics. It pushes for transparency. If everyone's working with the same models, the same data, it builds trust. Countries can see the impact of what they're doing, which hopefully makes them act more responsibly in space. So it's not just about the numbers themselves, but using them to get everyone on the same page working together. Exactly. Like yeah. a new kind of space diplomacy. It's pretty exciting. It really is. But let's bring it back down to Earth for our listeners. What does this mean for someone who's not a space lawyer or a data scientist? Okay, so say you're listening to this and thinking, space is cool and all, but what does this have to do with ME? I think this actually changes how we even think about space careers. It's not just astronauts and rocket scientists anymore. It's funny you say that because, yeah, that's what people picture, right? But this is like a whole new category opening up. Exactly. In the future, knowing how to use data, build those models, understand how policies really work, that's going to be just as important as designing satellites. So someone listening who's, I don't know, still in school, what should they study if they're into this? Is polite econometrics 101 a thing yet? Maybe someday. Uh -huh. But the best part is it's all connected. Science and tech, for sure, but also economics, how countries work together. Hmm. Even some computer programming wouldn't hurt. So the more you know, the better prepared you'll be for this whole space thing. Absolutely. You'll be able to see the big picture, how everything fits together. Which is kind of the point of Plykonometrics, right? Makes sense. But what about people already working in space? How do they adapt to this new world? Be curious. Look at the data your work uses. Can you analyze it better? Use it to make decisions? Propose new projects? Becoming data savvy no matter what your job is. You got it. And honestly, there's help out there. This paper we've been talking about is a good place to start. There are courses, experts to learn from. It's true. We've shown everyone this potential future, but now they need the tools to actually get there. And those tools are ready. It's such an exciting time to be in this field. It's unbelievable. From talking about old space treaties to data shaping how we explore space responsibly. Wild. It shows how powerful a new idea can be, changing how we look at something so big and complicated. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, that about wraps up our deep dive into polite econometrics. Hopefully everyone listening is feeling inspired, maybe grabbing a pen and paper for some further research. And hey, maybe someone out there will be writing the next chapter in all this. That'd be incredible. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for exploring with us, and we'll catch you on the next deep dive.